Can nausea, vomiting, and stomach discomfort be symptoms of stomach cancer? They can, but they can also be symptoms of a bacterial infection. These types of symptoms are called non-specific symptoms, meaning they are not unique to the only one condition, but many. Given the ambiguity of symptoms and the almighty power of the internet, there is unfortunately a lot of space for misinformation, leading to people with actual stomach cancer thinking that they certainly don't have it, thus not seeking help in time, or on the other hand, causing real psychological distress to people who don't have cancer by leading them to think that they do. With this video, we will try to fight misinformation by providing you with the only thing we can over the internet. Accurate and complete information. We believe that an educated patient will have the best chance to seek help in a timely manner and be in control of their well-being. This is why we're going to present this topic to you in a systematic and easy to understand way. First, we're going to give you a brief overview of the disease, including vulnerable groups and risk factors. Then, we're going to inform you about the early onset and progression of stomach cancer before there are even any symptoms. Next, you're going to hear about the symptoms, diagnostics, as well as how cancer staging is done. And finally, we're going to talk about the prognosis and therapy. Now let's start with our overview. Stomach cancer is the most frequent malignancy of this organ, usually affecting people over 50 years old, more often men than women. In some countries, such as Japan, the incidence is up to four times higher than the world average. In the case of early stage discovery, the prognosis is good. However, every second case is diagnosed in later stages. Stomach cancer is caused by genetic mutations in certain cells of the stomach. These mutations can either be inherited or they can occur during life, which is called acquired. The exact cause of acquired mutations is not completely clear, but it is known that certain dietary habits and pre-existing conditions can promote them, namely high salt and low fiber food, as well as smoked and grilled foods. This is because smoking and grilling food leads to formation of certain chemicals called nitrosamines. These chemicals are called carcinogens, since it is known that they contribute to damaging genetic material in a way that can lead to cancer. Another type of chemical, called aflatoxins, are also carcinogenic, and they are found in mouldy food, for example, mouldy cheese. Besides these, nicotine and alcohol are also carcinogenic. Of pre-existing conditions, the most notable one is, is infection by Helicobacter pylori. In medical terms, stomach cancer is called gastric adenocarcinoma. Gastric comes from the Latin word gaster, which means stomach. Adenocarcinoma is the compound word derived from the word adeno, which refers to glands, and carcinoma, referring to cancer. This very nomenclature can already hint at the main features of this cancer, that is, that it is a malignant tumour originating from the glands of the stomach. Glands in the stomach? Yes, that's right! Let me tell you briefly about them, so you can understand where stomach cancer originates. The stomach is a hollow organ of the digestive system, specialised in the accumulation and digestion of food. It receives food from the esophagus, splashes it with acid, and then pushes it down into the small intestine. The aforementioned acid consists of several chemical elements, all produced by the glands from the stomach wall. The stomach consists of four parts, the cardia, fundus, body, and the pylorus. This part here, the cardia, connects with the esophagus, and this part here, the pylorus, connects with the small intestine. As you can see on the image, the stomach has two curvatures, the greater curvature and the lesser curvature. If we zoom into the wall of the stomach, we can see many things, but most importantly, we can see that there are three layers, inner, middle, and outer. These are significant for later defining the stage of the cancer. Notice that in the first layer, the mucosa, are the stomach glands, which as we previously mentioned, is the site of stomach cancer. There are two types of stomach cancer, intestinal and diffuse. Intestinal cancer is usually a single mass that appears on the lesser curvature, or antrum, of the stomach. This type usually infiltrates and thickens the stomach wall. 
The diffuse type is not so centralized, but rather spreads diffusely throughout all parts of the stomach, forming notable masses on the inner lining of the stomach. After varying periods of time, if untreated, stomach cancer usually spreads via three different ways. Directly, spreading on the surrounding tissues, via the root of blood vessels, and via the root of lymph vessels. Via direct invasion, the cancer usually spreads to the pancreas, the neighbouring part of the large intestine, and the liver. Via the blood route, it most frequently spreads to the liver. Through lymphatic vessels, it spreads to a variety of lymph nodes in the abdomen, but also as far as to the ovary and clavicular regions. In the earliest stages, stomach cancer usually produces no symptoms. With the progression of disease, the first onset of non-specific symptoms usually occurs. These include discomfort in the upper abdominal region, around the stomach, ranging from the sense of fullness to severe pain, heartburn, a dark, tar-coloured stool, loss of weight over time, frequently followed by nausea and vomiting that can be bloody, in some cases, a palpable mass in the abdomen, and if the disease has spread, palpable masses can be felt in the affected organs. Upon visiting a doctor, a physical examination will be performed first. This is usually followed by an examination by ultrasound, where your doctor will try to visualise the interior of your abdomen, looking for any abnormalities. Crucial diagnostic procedures are gastroscopy and medical imaging. During gastroscopy, a flexible pipe is inserted into the mouth and led to the stomach. The pipe is equipped with a small camera, which allows your doctor to visualise the interior of the stomach. It's also geared with a small apparatus that can take a sample of the stomach tissue, which is usually done if the doctor notices any suspicious change within the stomach. The purpose of this is to then further examine that tissue and determine whether it is cancer or not. This procedure usually takes 15 to 30 minutes and is done while the patient is sedated to minimise the feeling of discomfort. Gastroscopy is usually complemented by imaging techniques most frequently with CT and contrast radiography. CT is very helpful in determining whether there are any metastases in the rest of the body, while radiography provides a more focused insight into the rest of the digestive system. In this particular case, radiography is usually conducted with a contrast. Contrast is a substance which the patient takes orally. On X-ray, this substance is very bright, producing a contrast against the walls of the esophagus, stomach and intestine. This way, it is easier to notice if there are any abnormalities in the walls of these organs. If the biopsy confirms stomach cancer, the next step is to define which stage the disease is at, as it will affect the choice of treatment. There are four stages, graded from stage 1 to stage 4, with stage 1 referring to the earliest stage and stage 4, the terminal stage. These stages are determined by a more graduating staging scale, often seen on medical documentation, called the T&M scale. In medical documents, patients usually see things like T3N2M1. Let's firstly clarify what that even means. T refers to the tumour size, N to the lymph nodes in terms of if they are affected and where and how many, and M refers to the metastasis in terms of whether they exist or not. Here's what knowledge doctors use when assigning these attributes. In terms of the tumour size, T1 refers to early stage tumour present in mucosa. T2 refers to tumour is also present in the middle or muscular layer. T3 refers to tumour is also present in the outer layer or serosa. And T4 refers to tumour is also present in the adjacent organs. With regards to lymph nodes, N1 refers to 1 to 2 regional lymph nodes affected, N2 refers to 2 to 6 regional lymph nodes affected, and N3 refers to 7 or more regional lymph nodes affected. And with regards to metastases, N0 refers to no metastases, and M1 refers to metastases present in other organs. Combining the findings within each criteria enables the final staging of the cancer. Stage 1 are the cases with only the inner layer of the stomach infected, T1 or T2, with no lymph nodes infected, N0, nor metastatic deposits found, M0. Stage 2 are the cases with inner and middle stomach layers affected, 
T1 to T3, with regional lymph nodes affected too, N1 to N2, but without metastases, M0. Alternatively, stage 2 are also cases with full thickness of stomach wall affected, T3, but without spreading to lymph nodes, N0, or other organs, M0. Stage 3 are the cases with advanced invasion of the wall, T2 to T4, and lymph nodes, N1 to N2, but no metastases, M0. And stage 4 are the cases with partial to full invasion of the stomach wall and adjacent organs, T1 to T4, and regional lymph nodes, N1 to N2. As well as cases with all three criteria positive, local invasion, T1 to T4, regional lymph nodes, N0 to N2, and distant metastases, M1. In oncology, which is a branch of medicine that deals with malignant diseases, the prognoses are usually projected through five years of survival after the diagnosis. The prognosis for stomach cancer, as with any other, depends on the stage. When the tumour affects just the stomach wall, the chance of survival is around 90%. With lymph nodes affected, this statistic is around 70%. In stage 3, the survival rates are around 30%, while at stage 4, they are around 5%. Treatment is also defined by the stage, with a general tendency to apply more radical measures for more advanced stages of cancer. The exact therapy is carefully designed on a case-by-case -case basis through consulting with several medical specialists. So here we will explain just the general guidelines. The golden standard for curing stomach cancer is surgery, meaning complete removal of the tumour. In early stages, the procedure is minimally invasive, involving just parts of the stomach. With a more advanced stage, a partial or total removal of the stomach and adjacent lymph nodes may be indicated. When the stomach is entirely removed, to make sure that the food can still pass to the small intestine, surgeons will connect the intestine directly with the esophagus. After the operation, patients can be submitted to chemotherapy treatment, which in some cases is combined with radiation therapy. Given that stomach cancer is often not so responsive to these types of treatments, they are usually indicated as palliative measures to alleviate pain and improve the quality of life. Thanks for watching and stay healthy! This video is a part of KenHub's limited clinical series and is for educational purposes only. It does not provide medical advice and none of the information in this video should be used as an alternative to a medical exam, specialist diagnosis, nor treatment. If you're feeling any health disorder symptoms, please contact your doctor.